Yo, just when I thought that Mac and Melba couldn't be any more wacky, child, this episode was good. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up? I'm Jaded Nerd, and this is going to be my recap and my reaction, my review for Claws Season 3, Episode 3. Look, I'm getting my life, I'm enjoying the episode, and Desna wakes up, looking like one old snack, got the kids, the cassava melons, sitting all out, curves, and womanly glory, and realness, and real body, and chow, she's giving it all to us, and she's feeling good, because, you know, she done had some good old hop on pop with Roller, so she's having one old good old time, and remember... She's feeling good about herself. She's bossing up and she's getting what she finally feel like she deserves. Look, she's feeling all like the cat's meow. She's walking downstairs because she's staying with Jennifer right now. The kids is all jumping off the walls and she's like, look, girl, get these kids. Jennifer and Bryce are trying to get themselves together because they're meeting with the lawyer. They're trying to see if EJ really does have a case to get sole custody of Brianne. So Jennifer is worried. Bryce is worried and they're just trying to make sure that they got all their stuff together. They're going to make a good impression on the lawyer. We get to the meeting with the lawyer and Bryce and Jennifer are talking and, and they're sharing their concerns. And we find out that, that Bryce is actually, he, he's empathizing with EJ because he knows what it's like to have the possibility of being away from your kids. And he's like, look, he is her biological father. And I, I, he just, he, he's feeling that. And, and Jennifer's kind of caught off guard by that. She's a bit bothered. If she could have her way, she and Bryce would have sole custody. EJ would never come around and that would make her feel so much better. But it's a lot more complicated with that, especially when you're dealing with non-custodial parents. You get what I mean? And there's a different family unit. It's a whole lot going on. And I understand where Jennifer is coming from, but she's being a bit selfish because at the end of the day, this is about Brianne. And this is about her having an understanding of who she is, her lineage, her heritage, her background, understanding both sides. You get what I'm saying? And I think that I'm hoping that Jennifer and I'm hoping that EJ ain't off no no BS. You get what I'm saying? And that if he's really just trying to foster a relationship with his daughter, then I'm hoping that Jennifer can kind of get on board with that. So remember, Roller and Desna have been hooking up. They're having a really good time. And he's like catching feelings. And she's telling him, all right, you said you got feelings. You got to show me. So he goes to Polly and he's like, look, I need some help. I don't think Desna takes me seriously. What can I do? And and Polly is one of these really interesting people because she she plays this. She's got she's an interesting dynamic. And one thing that I like that she does is she's able to work with people. She's able to pull out the best in people. And she's like, look, we're going to hook you up. We're going to have you change your image a little bit. So Desna is going to take you seriously. Long story short, she gives um, our boy Roller one old um, poor man's Channing Tatum makeover. You get what I'm saying? Because basically when I watch it, I get Channing Tatum without the six pack. And that's okay. So he's looking clean, fresh. You get what I'm saying? He cleans up well. He cleans up well, and I'm thinking, all right, come through, Paula. You did that, and we get to see that because Roller is fell in love with the box and Desna and everything, child. He's doing all he can to let her know, look, I'm serious about you, and I'm trying to get with you, and I want to be serious. So we're going to keep our eye on that. Let me know what y'all think about that in the comments. Do y'all think that it should just be fun, or do you think she needs to give him a chance and see if they can actually have something together? Let me know what y'all think about that. Later that day, y'all, Desna and the crew, they roll up to the salon. You get what I'm saying? They open it up. It's going to be another day. And and lo and behold, Miss Penelope is sitting up in the chair. Now, remember, last episode, somebody took her out. They executed her. They dragged her body off. And Desna thought she had saved her life. Desna thought that she had the upper hand. She thought she had gotten one up on Mac and Melba, y'all. And she thought that she she did something really good. But then to see Miss Penelope sitting up in that chair, it, it was just surreal. It, they gagged. You get what I'm saying? And and, and, and again, they got to get it together, figure out what they're going to do. So Desna and the girls, they got to figure out how they're going to clean up the scene, how they're going to get rid of the body. You know what I'm saying? And at first, you know, Virginia and everybody was like, no. And, and Desna is basically telling them, look, y'all. Let me handle this. This is me. She's dead because of me. 
I'm going to handle this. Okay. So while they're cleaning the scene up, getting the shot back together, getting rid of all that evidence or whatever, Desna rolls off and she's able to take the body to the, um, the morgue. You get what I'm saying? Because Polly got hookups. People like Polly. You get what I'm saying? Everybody likes Polly and she's got one old hookup down to the coroner's office. Okay. And they're able to bring the body in there. No questions asked. Woo, 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 two, two, two. So look, once again, there's a bullet that Desna and dodge. You get what I'm saying? But it's a reminder. It's like, look, you stepping into the big league, you stepping into the arena, you're dealing with Mac and Melba. They're crazy. OK, and you want to be the boss. You trying to elevate the team. You want everybody to win. You want all the girls to be bosses. And, I, and I'm feeling that. And, 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 and think about Lady Macbeth and her ambition is that, again, I keep saying it. A lot of times there's collateral damage. You get what I'm saying? So even though it's not like she did it on purpose, it's not like that was what she wanted to happen. But it's an unfortunate consequence. And the thing about them leaving the body at the salon was a message. It was basically like, look, we know that you tried to protect her. We know that you think you understand what's going on, but we, we, we need you to stay in your place. And I kind of like what Desna did when she sent them a message. Child, she sent them one old funeral arrangement of flowers and sorry for your loss. I know that Penelope meant so much to you. And that was interesting because it was basically her flex and saying, look, I didn't, I didn't appreciate what y'all did. I know y'all did it. And I want y'all to know that not only did I know that y'all did it, okay, I got, I took care of everything. So there is, it didn't, it didn't stop me. It's not going to shake me. And you don't know whether I, I, I cleaned the body, I moved the body. You don't know what I did. So she's putting the ball back in their court. You get what I'm saying? Because she's like, look, what are y'all trying to do? Everything that Desna is doing, like she has to magnify it from what she was doing with the pill mill and the salon and stuff like that. Everything is bigger. The casino is on a whole nother level. And in and, and these decisions, the good and bad, the collateral damage, everything is magnified. So she had to send that message. She has to exhibit strength or they're not going to take her seriously. And they're going to have her being the silent partner. And, and she ain't got time for that. Before we get back into the recap, I got to call something out that I didn't appreciate. And I didn't like that Miss Virginia was flirting. I understand Dean's and special needs. I understand that, you know, she's been through a lot. She's been shot. She's got one eye. I understand. But girl, you signed in for the long haul. You knew what you were signing up for. Okay. And you do have something special. I wasn't feeling that, that flirting. I wasn't feeling that, Miss Virginia. Girl, I got my side eye on you because you was all too quick to be gazing up. You, you, you get what I'm saying? Like, I understand that she cares, but I don't know if it's starting to wear on her dealing with Dean and living the way that they're living and stuff like that and all the stuff that's happening. And again, choices and decisions that she's made, but sometimes you make a decision and then as you start to deal with it, it, you realize, yo, this ain't really what I signed up for. You get fatigued. A whole lot can happen. So we're going to keep our eyes on Virginia because, girl, you, I, I didn't like it. But we all know that Polly has been snooping around, getting information about what Mac and Melba are doing behind the scenes at this casino. She's been talking to the other general manager, doing what she can, getting the info when she can. We find out that the governor has this big old party plan and it's going to be a good opportunity to find out what's up with the, 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 the briberies and, and, and how they're laundering money. They need to see this operation. They need to see the extent of it, who's involved in all of that. So it's perfect. Y'all know these political fundraisers. But let me tell y'all something. When they get inside and, and something should have tipped them off when they had, and it did. You get what I'm saying? They take. You got to, we need your phones. So you already know the environment is like, nope, no phones, no pictures, no cell, no nothing. Okay. And then when they had costumes and they had to change and people got masks on, I'm thinking it wasn't a masquerade ball. Like what's really going on? Right. But when they walk inside, we got to talk about this party. When they walk inside and there's this gigantic sea of adult entertainment. I'm just going to leave it at that, y'all. It was a gigantic display of adults at play. Okay, debauchery. Child, they was getting it in. They had leather and chains. You had groups and twosomes and threesomes. Child, they was sitting there getting their life. Champagne and Molly. Girl, living. These Republican people, these conservative politicians, these pundits, you get what I'm saying? Constituents, you get what I mean? They sit up there, they're supposed to be morality, whatever, whatever, child, they were getting down, like one old Caligula, okay? They were giving us Caligula vibes 
all up in there. Desmond and the crew was like, whoa, okay, we, we got to, we, we know what we're here to do, right? We're here to get this information. We got to find out. So they spread out. They're living their lives. They're really having a good old time. People is having a good old time. People are having a good old time. When I tell y'all that Desna and Quiet Ann was working that room and getting that information, child, all I'm going to say is Quiet Ann slept with a man, okay? <laughs> she slept with a man because the Molly kicked in. They're feeling themselves. They're feeling they jush. It was a lie. Desna is the one that's actually able to get the main target in terms of like information, reconnaissance, finding out what the T is. And she finds out and she's got to, you know, flex a little bit to get behind that little curtain or whatever to, to get to the big time, right? And he was like, what's up, what's up? And he's got the electrocuted thing, the playing the little electric, you know, electric wand, a taser, whatever you want to call it. And when she opens up that robe and shows that body, and I was like, yes, ma'am, I put it in my notes. I was like... Oh my God, Desna and this body and the, and, the, and the kids and the curves and the lusciousness. Child, that was two scoops, three scoops, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten scoops. Do, 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 do. Young, that was amazing. That body was real soft, supple. Take notes. So she's doing enough to seduce him, playing with him and getting the electricity and shocking him and getting him off. He's getting his rocks off or whatever. And she's able to find out that, look. They understand where the money is coming from. They got a better understanding of the bribes and they have a better understanding of Mac and Melba and everything. And it's like now they know why Penelope was such a threat, especially when they saw that Mac and Melba are the ones hosting this this gigantic sea of adult entertainment. OK, and one old swing and sling on the stage acting all kinds of weird and wacky. OK, even though they was in that situation and it was tripping and zooted out of their minds and carrying on and loving and touching and everything, they still got the information that they needed. And now Desna is in a much better position. Now she can flex on them. OK, so they show up to the office. They're like, why are you in here? And she's like, you know what? Y'all going to be the silent partner. I'm not going to be in the background no more. She breaks down how she knows about the bribery. She breaks down how she knows about their sex parties their sea of adult entertainment and she even let them know and she stepped straight to Mac in his face and was like look if something happens to me if something happens to anybody that I care about you best believe all the information about everything that y'all are doing is going to the media the press the internet everything your whole little scheme gonna be crashing down y'all can't do nothing so y'all might want to keep it cute and y'all might want to understand and don't start no blank won't be no blank she had to flex up on her because she was from the moment that she found out that she was a majority, you know, a silent owner. She's been basically, you know, playing catch up. She's been behind the eight ball because they already knew what the game was. They already had their thing in place. She's had to kind of adapt on the fly. You get what I'm saying? So even though Lady Macbeth and her ambition in some respects, it does cause harm. There's collateral damage. But that ambition is the same thing that's driving her, that's making her adapt think on her feet you get what i'm saying and just when they think they got her buried just when they think oh desna don't want none child she ready mac is telling melba we underestimated her i think we underestimated her and she's like y'all right y'all did you get what i'm saying so look we get to the end of the episode and there's a couple of things that's going on right the episode is wrapping up and ej finally gets to meet brianne okay so that's going to be interesting Quiet Anne goes to get her relationship back on track because even though it was all that drama and arguing and they're hooking up when they go boxing and then she out of she don't want to be bothered. At the end of the day, she loves her. She wants to be with her. So she's going back to try to patch that back up. OK, Desna's getting ready for her date because she and Roller are going to be going on an official date. OK, no hop on pop in the backseat of the car. OK, they're going to be doing it official. But before she could even get to the date. Uh, Virginia and Dean roll up to see the new place because Desna got this beautiful new place because she's got the money and she's all ready for them to come back, move back in. You know, mother hen bossing everybody around and Dean is like, no. Dean is like, nah, I don't want to move back in. I like it where we are. We're in the motel, but it's me and you. I'm your man. I'm the man I want to do for myself. And I already told y'all in the other, in the first recap for season three, he wasn't feeling the fact that Virginia got shot, okay? He isn't feeling that. And even though he may not be able to articulate it or he's choosing not to articulate it, he ain't feeling that. So he basically had to raise his voice and be like, Virginia, yo, we got to go. We got to go. 
I ain't got time for this. Let's go over here and talk about Roller real quick because he's on his way to meet Desna for the date. He sees this very attractive black woman. That's his weakness. He loves women. I don't know why he stopped, okay? I don't know why he stopped to fix her car, why he fell for the okie doke. He should, he's trying to be serious about Desna. You shouldn't even been looking at her. You should have said deuces. You should have told her to call AAA, a Uber, Lyft, deuces, bye, but nope. Old habits die hard. He looking in the car engine. And then that's when all of a sudden he gets snatched up, kidnapped, taken off somewhere. And he can't meet Desna. Desna's calling. She don't know what's going on. So she's in another position where she's forced to face all of these things. Everything that's happened by herself. And that's what it is because when you level up and you're the boss, these things come at you. There are things that are going to be happening. So... She's starting to realize that as much as she would like companionship or as much as she want to bring people along for the ride, there are going to be times where it's just going to be Desna. It's just going to be her. And she's got to be able to take it into good times and weather the storm when things ain't working right. So look, I thought the episode was really good. I'm really anxious to see how EJ and Bryce and Jennifer work together to co-parent Brianne. We're going to see how that plays out. I want to see the situation with Desna because I know that Roller is all sprung or whatever, but I just don't see their relationship working out because she can't be fully ambitious if she's distracted by him. You get what I'm saying? And he's got his own stuff. And remember, he was with the Dixie Mafia child. So look, let me know what y'all think about the episode. How did y'all feel? If you can, please throw a like on the video. Subscribe and share. It's greatly appreciated. I'm Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to y'all next time.